Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Now let's crack some packs. Some uh, Lord of the Rings sealed in the early access event. Thanks again to Wizards for inviting me. And uh, open some interesting rares. The Balrog. Quite powerful, especially if you can use a treasure to ramp it out. Not that there's many treasures in the set, but that's the type of synergy you want to look for. We've got uh, Loot Bearer. 4-4 four, four with a bit of upside if you happen to have some equipment. Same goes with Mary. 2-2 two, two Haste with upside if you have equipment. You can maybe draw a few cards as well. The Watcher in the Waters, definitely one of the harder cards to evaluate. I don't think it's great. You really need instant speed card draw, which isn't plentiful. There's quite a few sorcery speed draw effects. But uh, who knows, maybe we can make it work. Horn of the Mark is potentially okay. I think it probably makes a cut in most sealed decks as long as you have a high enough creature count. But ideally you can pair it with... Some evasive creatures that can keep attacking, of course, nice with a small ring bear. And then the Doors of Durin. That could be a way to cheat some big creatures into play for free. Now looking at you, the Balrog. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can enable it consistently. So let's have a look. First off, might as well take a look at our uncommons. And... Uh, White isn't incredibly deep. They're all playable. You cannot pass with enough legendaries. Seems fine. Samwise is always good. And then the Witness can help you fly over. So not bad, just not a ton of white cards. Blue, we're not going to talk about Bill. But uh, Alron's pretty good. Doesn't take much to scry multiple times in one turn. We've got the uh, Yorith of the Healing House. Also pretty decent. A 1-4 just lines up well when blocking ring bears. And then the Bath Song is also pretty decent. Then Black has a few goodies with Gollum, and then mainly the Lieutenants making death touching tokens. Can be pretty nice when making small armies that can trade off. And then Red. We've got the Fire Leaper, pretty good 2 drop that scales over time. A Rising of the Day. Could also be good, especially if you can curve into some bigger creatures afterwards. Double Foray of Orcs. This is one of my favorite uncommons in the set, if not my favorite. Full stop. Especially in a deck that can amass a few times. This is almost a bomb level uncommon. Let's say you have a 1-1 one, one army, then you amass 2, make it 3-3, three, three, and deal 3 damage. Likely to take something very relevant out. But uh, if you have a 2-2 two, two army, deal 4 damage. That's uh, pretty insane. So pretty excited to have two of those, so that heavily pulls me into red. And uh, blue-red is probably the best home for Foray of Orcs, but we'll see. And then green has a Restoration. Celeborn, great in the blue-green deck specifically. Rivalry could also be strong. And then the Innkeeper for a food deck. Basin can be an okay mana sink, but gets kind of expensive. So... Let's see if our red is deep enough to make a deck. First off, let's take a look at white. So outside of our uncommons that we covered, we've got Double Rider. This one I don't mind. 3-1 with relevant late game utility. It's pretty nice. Farmer's also decent in a food deck. And then we have a Rider for the legendary deck. A couple more flyers with a soldier. And stalwarts. Nothing too exciting. Blue has triple birthday escape. Wow. So now blue red spells with foray and triple escape. Looks quite appealing to me. Um, Deceive the messenger could be fine as a way to amass orcs one just to get that initial orc going so we can amass on top of it to make our foray better. Bill is just Bill. Then there's a watcher. In case we can scry, can apply a good bit of pressure. Survivor could be quite good in a blue-red spells deck where we want to cast some expensive instances and sorceries. Captain, good in the draw two synergy deck. And then Elrond. And then, let's see here, we've got 1-4. Uh, Treason, also quite good. Get back our foray from the graveyard. Yeah, things are coming together. Isolation's also fine. Removal spell. And then Surrounded by Orcs, another card that helps us amass. 
and then the bass song and our watcher didn't see a ton of instant speed card draw so I'm not sure about the watcher in the water here but we'll see and then black triple orcish medicine not a great card um vanguard of Savine, two drop provides multiple bodies the uh, bats has been pretty impressive good with food tokens but also other random tokens can drain the opponent while being a 2-3 flyer which you know is decently statted there's quite a few two-part flyers out there that the bats can block and then a uh, double troll that is a pretty nice line cycler and then patrol another sack outlet potentially and then let's take a look at red rush the room not a great trick goblin fine two drop if you're aggressive breaking of the fellowship a bit of a conditional removal spell so not super excited by it cast into the fire could be quite good the flamesmith could also be good in a blue red spells deck where you're casting lots of instant and sorceries fire leaper we discussed Ooh, nice a smite the deathless probably the best red common in the set we've got rising swarming of moria another amass card that plays well with our foray and then a double fire might play one of them so yeah double foray definitely exciting in reds but overall red sadly not very deep maybe there's a way for me to splash foray we'll see and then green has triple farsight pretty nice payoff for the scry deck potentially or well not payoff but enabler don't think we've seen any payoffs yet outside of maybe Elrond and many partings could be a way to splash an extra color potentially let's say we go blue green splash red then this could help and fury is another removal spell double pathfinder can also fix your mana so we do have a few ways to potentially splash Antish restoration also helps so I'm not uh, abandoning the possibility of green being a primary color here Farmers more for the food and sacrifice decks. And then uh, Celeborn we discussed as well. There's a guide to Scry 2. 4-5 Trample, that tempts is pretty good too. And then the Generous Ent, another nice basic line cycler. So green isn't bad. Has a bit of ramp and fixing, a little bit of removal. And uh, yeah, should help us splash additional colors. The Balrog. I'm hopefully gonna be able to cast. Don't think we have many treasure makers to go with it, but just ramping into it with an Antish Restoration could be good enough. And then if we play red green, we could also pick up Rivalry and Doors of Durin. And then we have a Terrace for fixing. Okay, so at first glance, white I think we can dismiss pretty easily blue is mostly exciting because of um, triple birthday escape but then we don't really have a ton of other incentives to go blue since again i don't think the watcher is particularly great takes too long to get going and we don't seem to have any instant speed card draw to really enable it treason would be nice with foray admittedly but uh Maybe we just go red, green, splash, black for the Balrog. Any other black cards I can splash? We can pick up the Troll as another good card to ramp into. And then I could maybe splash for the Lieutenants just as a good 4-drop. But uh, we'll have to take a closer look. Yeah, I think that includes most of our powerful cards in the sealed pool. Good amount of removal. And we kind of need to be green as one of our primary colors to have access to the reliable fixing from Pathfinder and many partings. I'm not sure about the Elven far side. I don't know if we really need that one. Since it doesn't help us find Foray, at least not as a creature. Although we can still scry towards it, of course. All right, so enough talk. Let's build a sealed pool. So, joint colors lands are welcome too i don't think we're playing the great hall all right so definitely wants smites definitely wants 
Fire Leaper, double foray, and then double swarming is still pretty good. And yeah, I guess we do have two swarmings to enable the Balrog. Forgot we had swarming to make treasure. So yeah, that can set up a turn, what is it, turn five Balrog? Let's see, five mana, make a treasure, that's six. Yeah, that should work, turn five with the treasure. Since we have six mana and we got a one mana discount. So that would be pretty nice. Probably playing the loot bearer, even if we don't have any equipment to go with it. Uh, let's see here. Rusher room doesn't seem necessary. Goblin, maybe. Although at this point, yeah, I guess we'll be red, green, splash, black. So red two drops are still welcome. Breaking maybe makes a cut. Probably play one cast into the fire. Not sure about both. And then Flamesmith will have to take a closer look at our total instant and sorcery count. Rising of the day. Legendary creatures get one extra power. Don't have a ton of those. Giving haste when our top end already has haste is not super relevant. So not sure if we'll play that one. And then one fire could be an okay finisher as well. Then in green, I do like many partings. If we're going to play green as our primary, double pathfinder. Revive the Shire is maybe okay. If we have some uh, swamp cyclers, for instance, cycle it early, fix our mana, and then get it back later while making food. Could be fine, but we may not have enough room for it. And then Antish Restoration seems fine too. Guide is a fine 4 drop, 4 5 trample. The Generous End, Rivalry, Doors of Durin also incentivizes us to play some of these land cyclers that we can cheat into play for free. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, do we want Celeborn the Wise? How many ways do we have to scry? It is good if we do play Elven Farsight since we can pump it quite a few times. And let's see, I guess it also synergizes with Doors of Durin. Yeah, I guess it's good enough. And then Ends Fury. Do we want a bow? Doesn't seem necessary. Our deck's all about playing beefy creatures. Don't really care about plus one, plus two, and reach. Um, Horn of the Mark. Not quite sure about this one. Our deck's not really attacking with lots of small creatures to enable it. And it's not like we have a lot of evasive creatures to help with that. So might be leaving this one in the sideboard. Uh, Mirkwood Bats could also be good if we have enough tokens. We have a couple treasure token makers. The Amass, of course, helps. Bats would be good, but it is, of course, on the splash. So we'll have to see if we have enough fixing for it. And then Lieutenant seems great, too. The other black cards, um, less sold on. Golem could be okay, but it's not really all the necessary. Maybe a patrol as another beefy 5-drop. And then I guess we'll put uh, Farsight in there too for now. So definitely need to make a bunch of cuts. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking the look of this initial build. Just kind of a junt ramp deck with a few decent tools to ramp. Swarming makes treasure, restoration adds mana, double pathfinder. And then try and slam down some of these beefy creatures. And then double foray should be quite serviceable with double swarming. So I'm not really missing too many of the blue a mass cards, so those can stay in the sideboard. And then how many lands do we play? Double Troll and Ant can fetch up a land, but we are still a pretty mana-hungry deck. I guess we have Double Pathfinder, but it's also Mana Sink at 7. I don't think we need to play 17 land, I think 16 is still reasonable with Triple Land Cycler. Question is if I go lower than 16, and I think the answer is no. We'll have to look at our creature count to see whether or not Elven Farsight is worth it, because it does synergize pretty well with our Celeborn, admittedly. I don't think fire is going to be necessary as a finisher. Uh, let's take a look here. How many token-related cards do we have? So, does this put a mass in here as well? Yeah, I guess it doesn't. So, a couple of food tokens. Not a ton of creature tokens outside of uh, a mass. So maybe the lieutenant's not really necessary. 
It's a good individual card, but on the splash, maybe not needed. Bats is one of our few flyers. Although we can probably just win by forcing through one large creature on the ground eventually. So this wouldn't be a bad deck for Rising of the Day, now that I look at it. Giving these creatures haste isn't bad. So I think the Bats goes, just because we have too many 4-drops. And I think I prefer the Lieutenants. Has more mass synergy with Foray. Guide still seems fine. Maybe the Loot Bearer isn't all that necessary since we don't have any equipment. So it's literally just a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I guess I think I prefer a 3-4 that's Christ 2 at that point to synergize with Celeborn and to find some of our payoffs. So Loot Bearer is gone. And then Revive the Shire I still kind of like. Many parting seems pretty useful. Triple Farsight is definitely overkill, might play one or two at most. Rivalry also benefits from having legendary, so that's another reason to like the lieutenants. So let's take a look at our actual curve. So Farsight we play on turn one, partings can be played on turn one. Breaking is not really a two drop. Cast is sometimes a two drop. We'll have to look at our instant and sorcery count for Flamesmith. In terms of removal, we seem to be doing okay. So this is a more realistic representation of our curve, with some of these uh, land cyclers being turn one plays as well. Seven more cuts, that's quite a few. All right, so let's go down to one far side. What's our creature count? 15. It's not incredibly high, so Farsight may not be at its best in this deck since we have a couple quote-unquote creatures that aren't actual creatures since they have the amass mechanic and are instances and sorceries instead. So I'm probably better off not playing the Farsight since missing would be a bit of a disaster. Then Breaking of the Fellowship doesn't seem needed since we have quality removal elsewhere. Cast into the fire. So I guess we're also looking whether or not Flamesmith is worth it. We have an okay number of instances and sorceries, but I might end up cutting a couple more here. So rivalry is great. Smite isn't going anywhere. We have double foray. And Fury seems good. So revive is a maybe. Cast into the fire is a maybe. Many Partings also gets a land, but we do need green to be able to use it in the first place. I actually wonder if Shire Terrace is even necessary in this deck. Because taking a mana off activating it is not ideal, and we seem to have enough fixing elsewhere with Double Pathfinder, Many Partings, the Land Cyclers. So we may not actually need Terrace. And instead add green, since we actually need green mana to get to our mana fixing in the first place. Probably drop down to two swamps. Eight forest, six mountain. Might need to increase that number slightly. Because we do have a forest cycler, but we don't have a mountain cycler. Um, I guess I could go down to one swamp, but that seems a little sketchy. Also have the Restoration that can search up more basics. So we're not lacking mana. Question is, rising of the day, are we going to be curving out and beating down? Our deck's really more of a kind of ramp combo deck almost. So I don't know if by the time we play our big expensive creature we're going to be too far behind on board where we can't actually afford to attack with it. And if that's the case, then rising isn't really where we want to be. It's probably going to perform better in a more aggressive deck, um, which we aren't really. Also don't have a ton of legendaries necessarily. And we're not tempting the ring a whole lot to make a legendary ring bear. So yeah, I think uh, the uh, rising is probably not quite what we need. 
Okay, so four more cuts. I think Flamesmith is potentially on the cutting block with 11 instants or sorceries. It's just kind of a 2-1 that doesn't do much late game. Okay. Don't know if it's better than a goblin though. Although we could also just cut the goblin. Our deck's pretty low on two drops now. That's potentially a concern. Although we have cast into the fire as something we can do on turn two and smite the deathless. Can always be played on two as well. This is 41. Could always play a second cast into the fire as well, but I think we're good in terms of removal. 17 lands. I think we just cut a land now, since we have all those ways to find more. And uh, do I cut a forest? Do I cut a mountain is the question. Would still have four black. You know, cutting a swamp isn't crazy. Although it would be kind of awkward if our opponent somehow destroys it or mills it. But we still have double pathfinder. Partings finds black. Restoration can find swamp. Double troll. And as soon as we have one swamp, I don't imagine we're going to want to swamp cycle again for a second swamp. There's not many turns where I imagine needing two black sources. So maybe one swamp's sufficient. Okay, and then we have seven mountain, eight forests, plus an extra forest cycler. And then fire leaper at least is a good mana sink. Yeah, this looks pretty good to me. Good amount of removal. And then the late game of a Doors of Durin with Balrog and Double Troll and Rage Horn and Patrol. And then can't forget about Double Fury of Oryx with Double Swarming of Moria. Did we leave any other MS cards in the sideboard? Just the blue ones. And then I guess the Medicine could amass one. But it's not really a card we want to play on turn two. And Vanguard on the Splash also doesn't seem quite worth it. So yeah, black two drops just aren't where we want to be in this deck. Yeah, I don't think we need Terrace. I think we've got enough fixing without it. And being colorless early can be kind of punishing. Okay, I think uh, this is it. Just going to pick our basic land art and we're good to go. Hopefully Doors of Durin shows up and we get to cheat some creatures into play. It's also quite flavorful that we're playing Durin's Bane and the Doors of Durin in the same deck. So we get the true Moria experience here. Let's go. On the play with a fine hand. Got our three colors. Early removal to stay alive. And then the Lieutenant could be pretty nice to stabilize. So what double color do we need the most? Don't really need any double red or double green. But we might want to cast two red spells in the same turn. Opponent red black. There's our foray. Alright, so just pass with... Uh, Cast into the fire at the ready. Envelope. So they get a ring bearer. Could also exile their artifact here. Maybe that's more relevant than killing a 1 1. Gonna regret it if our opponent plays the one ring next turn. And then if I play this first, we can maybe deal three damage to something. That would be nice. Just double checking if it's 4A dealing the damage or the army, but yeah, it's uh, 4A dealing the damage, so it doesn't synergize with Death Touch. Ooh, Old Man Willow. It's a 4 4, so 4A doesn't quite kill it here. Would have a 3 3 dealing three. We could Ends Fury to fight. So yeah, I can't quite cleanly kill Old Man Willow. Next turn I can double spell, but in the meantime, the Old Man gets to attack. So what to do about it? Can Foray 
Kill the 1-1, one, one, attack with a 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. Yeah, a little awkward. I guess we just foray kill the 1-1 one, one, then. And then next turn, if they don't kill my 3-3, three, three, I can maybe make something happen. But old man is definitely a bomb. Take five. Swarming of Moria. Man, if only we had it in the reverse order. Can still make a 5-5, five, five, make a treasure, and then I guess Ants Fury kills Old Man. Yeah, that's still pretty good here. I think Old Man's still scarier than the patrol. But if we kill patrol, then we get to attack with both creatures. But this is just going to keep on getting bigger. Question is, yeah, I guess I should attack first. I miss out on the extra plus one counter and plus one plus one. But if I fight first, then they could trade, which is probably not something we want. Alright, we're out of action now though. So if they answer my 6-6, six, six, we're in trouble. That's fine. Our opponent can jump and sack with a patrol to keep drawing, that's pretty good. Nope, they're attacking. It's kind of surprising here. Take four. Just a land. So attack with both. If we trade for Lieutenant, that's fine. If they have a trick, we have a smite in response. And we still have a food token to gain three. Question is, do we smite if they double block? Interesting. Double chump. They could have a club to deal four damage, sacking the 1-1, one, one, finish off the 2-2, two, two, but then they're likely casting it before damage, and then we can maybe kill the 2-2 two, two in response. Yep. So it didn't deal any damage, but at least our 6-6 six, six survives. And then I'll pass and plan to gain three, probably. All right, still in a precarious position. So this is the food, this is the treasure. They look pretty similar, but uh, they want to eat the treasure. Troll, that's a nice draw. Get in for six. If this trades for a removal spell and patrol, I'm happy. Cast into the fire. Okay, is there something else? Because this is still one damage short. Okay, I'll take it. Opponent passes. We smash for nine. And this game seems pretty over. Sweet. We're on the play with no green mana, although we've got an ant, so never mind. Yeah, I love the land cyclers. Always a great addition to any limited format. Turn two. Pathfinder, and then we can maybe double spell Pathfinder and Fire Leaper. And then if we flood out, we at least have a 7 mana ability we can use. A lookout could be pretty good if they have some other elf synergies next turn, but we'll find out. The Watchdogs, that's fine. A rivalry is an instance, so 
could potentially set up some interesting plays. Uh, I'll uh, take it here. Ants Fury. We're kind of lacking a beefy creature to really go off for now. Probably start by attacking with Fire Leaper. If they block with the Watchdogs, I can pump twice. If not, just pump once, play Swarming, I think. Can uh, pass it back. This is instant speed. Porter for mana 4 4. No attacks. Ooh, nice. It's troll time. Yeah, we don't even need to use a treasure. Does Fire Leaper attack first is a question. Opponent can block with Porter. We would pump once to trade. Pump three times to trade for another creature, so they're unlikely to block, I would say. Alright, I guess we'll be trading for a porter here. Pump once, pump twice, pump three times for power. Yeah, that should work. And that's why Fire Leaper is such a good card. And pass it back. Horn of the Mark with only one creature out is a little sad. And the Watchdogs attack. Nope, maybe. They reconsider. Okay, so let's just play a troll here. Could attack first. They might have a trick up their sleeve. Could also have a counter spell for all we know. So a troll might not resolve. Deceive the messenger. Okay, so a good rivalry in response to kill the watchdogs. So they don't get to kill my token. Do we really care? Nah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they didn't attack when they were holding that card, but I guess it worked out for them. Okay, so Bounce Spell could be bad now, since they get to attack and draw a card. Alright, tapping not quite as devastating, since at least now we can uh, leverage our other removal. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have attacked with a 2-2. Although, I guess having a trick that also makes a creature was the worst case scenario. Opponent found Glorfindel. That seems worth taking out. Opponent did not play it, so they've got other plans. Maybe don't want to tap out for another troll and instead go for restoration. It is an instant, so I don't have to cast it now. Question is whether a troll wants to attack or not. Kind of an interesting spot. Might want to just hang back to have a blocker so they can keep drawing cards. And then can restoration and rivalry all at instant speed. Going for an Ants Fury seems a bit sketchy to four open mana. So they had a bounce spell, actually. Okay. So let's restoration. Get three lands. And then I could rivalry, killing the watchdog. It's probably fine. Okay. Now they do have an evasive attacker, but uh, Pathfinder could still block. Alright, points got their own restoration, although they only get to find two lands with it. So now slam down Troll, maybe Ants Fury as well, and prevent them from ever getting the horn going again. No 
Okay, so feeling pretty good about this game. Got a mana advantage, double pathfinder as a mana sink, double troll, bonus on empty. So a pretty strange sequence of events needs to happen for us not to win this game, but always have to be mindful and think of how can we lose this game and try to avoid playing into it, basically. Uh, Blue-green doesn't have access to any real sweepers, so I'm okay to overextend a little bit. Mm. Can't quite double spell, can we? This is treasure, this is food, so we'll just attack, play another troll, keep it simple. Opponent can block. Because we have super menace. And generous sense, not bad. Opponent back up to 14. And they're attacking, that seems like a mistake. Alright, opponent passes, so can gain 3, that's probably fine. Alright, so let's see, this has 5 power, so if I turn one of these into a ring bearer, it still actually can't attack past the end if they triple block, but we can of course pump, and that should be good enough here. So turn the troll sideways. Opponent has to block, otherwise they're dead. So 7, 8 power total, so they can't even finish off my uh, troll here, I think. Yeah, they were probably better off blocking the other one, so pumping it would have at least traded. But yeah, opponent's in a pretty desperate situation. A land's not going to do it. All right, sweet. We have yet to see some of our rares in action, like the Balrog or Durin's Door, but uh, so far the deck seems to be working. Well, speak of the devil, or the demon. Although our hand's pretty awkward without red. Although, oh man, if we can curve swarming into Balrog, that would be living the dream. So I really just need one mountain or any of our green mana fixers. We have the one mana sorcery as well as the uh, two mana creatures. So if we count all our red sources and green mana fixing, I'm starting to talk myself into this. And then any fourth land and I can at least play guide, which is likely to find red. All right, let's go for it. On the draw, this would be a harder pill to swallow, probably, since we could be too far behind by the time we play Guide. But on the play, it should still help us stabilize pretty well. Bones got a Cycler, we draw our Mountain. Sometimes magic is not a difficult game. We're ready to cast into the fire. Any scary 2-drop that has one toughness. <laughs> okay, that one they can keep. I guess we could still remove it since it's an artifact, but should I? It does block my 2-2. Two -two. It does potentially fix their mana. I'm not casting this for a while. Alright, fine. Turn 3 Swarming, turn 4 Guide, turn 5 Balrog. Are we ready? Potent could still maybe have a discard spell. Potent's also perfect Jund. Do we want a Celeborn? We just Scryed. I think we can do better. Just want to find some of my trolls now. Okay. Are we ready for a turn 5 Balrog? The Golem discard spell could still get us. Strider is fine, although it is a legendary, so it can block Balrog. But it's not going to block it profitably, I'll tell you that much. Oh yes. Get in there, buddy. can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. I 
We can even use patrol to sack it to kill something and then revive to get it back. Although, probably want to keep attacking for the time being. Strider 5 5 first strike. Six five, I'll take it. Grima, no life gain. That's fine. Ants Fury, yeah, that's pretty good. So opponent could jump with Grima. We could kill it, or we can just kill Strider, or we could just play patrol really. So send a Balrog. See if they want to jump. My only concern with Ants Fury on Strider is if there's some instant speed interaction that can uh, mess things up. And yeah, if our opponent takes it, then next turn we might remove their only legendary to guarantee the kill. Now I'm happy to jump block just to be safe. And then now if something goes wrong, I can at least sacrifice Balrog to the patrol to get some value. So we should have most angles covered. What's it gonna be? Two cards in hand, six mana. That's gonna be a Berserker, that's fine. Any reason to fight with Balrog over patrol or the other way around? I think Balrog's fine. Remove the only legendary. They could have made something else a ring bearer to have an extra legendary to potentially chum block. So maybe that was the decision with the uh, Berserker. They could have an instant speed. Tempted by the ring effect, I suppose. But I'm just sending the Balrog. Or do I? Yeah, this seems safer. We have revive to get it back. Yeah, opponent's just dead. Yeah, that was quite the beating. Turn 5, Balrog. There's a Balrog. No treasure to go with it, but Pathfinder to hopefully fix our mana. Yeah, we'll give it a try. And there's our red. Okay. So if Pathfinder survives, I probably just play a Lieutenant right away in case they can remove Pathfinder later and deny the black mana, or we can just top deck a Swamp. Sure. In that case, maybe prefer Scrying first. So it could now attack as a 4-4. Okay. So now they could double block quite profitably. So I don't think I still want to attack. Might find other ways to scry later. Who becomes our ring bearer? Probably the Pathfinder. Let's just chill. Our plan is make sure the board is somewhat stalled and then have the Balrog take over. Next turn we can already play our troll. A rider can blow up artifacts or enchantments. Okay. Could attack with 4-5 Trample. But then they just double block, so now let's just play Troll. Next turn, play Balrog, then Smash. Opponent is going wide, so if they have some Anthem effects, that could be scary. But our deck is curving out very nicely. Can also use the Pathfinder's ability at some point, so that's another reason not to trade. 
opponents lacking a legendary, which is a good sign for the Balrog, so it can attack unopposed. Does a troll attack? Here is the question. Should be okay to get in there. Opponent has to lose at least three creatures, and I'm okay trading off at this point. We. I guess let's see if they block 2 2, 3 3, and 3 2, 5 6 7. Then we would only kill two of them. So maybe Troll doesn't want to attack. Or I could send in everyone, including Celeborn. Does that leave me vulnerable on the way back? Don't think so. Yeah, because if I just attack with Troll and Balrog, then they have a decent triple block. But if I attack with everyone, then. That's no longer the case, and we want to just apply maximum pressure, I think. Forest doesn't seem needed, even though it helps me activate Pathfinder, potentially. Now let's just bottom it. For two mana, is there anything they could have? Maybe a pump spell? So yeah, that's a good block, but now they don't have the great block on the troll anymore. If they triple block troll to trade, I'm happy. All right. And a medicine. Fair enough. Bonus at three. Seventeen. Nine. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Ooh, banish. That's definitely the best answer to the Balrog. Exiling it so it doesn't get to trigger. Oh well. Bonus still at three. And if they get too aggressive, they might lose to our troll. Might have needed to keep line on top to activate Pathfinder, but we might draw one anyways. Because a trample is pretty relevant here. Yeah, a banish is definitely the best answer, because even if they played the fog, at least we could have eventually sacked it to the patrol. Now we can activate Pathfinder. So it should be okay to attack with both and pump accordingly. Fury of Orcs, pretty good too. Okay, so we'll have to do a bit of math here. So we have one going through here, so this trampling would be lethal. So opponent has to switch their blocks, but now they only have, let's see, six here. So I think they might be able to survive. If we trample here, then we kill everything. Although we would kill everything regardless right now. And yet they have six toughness, so trample for th I guess trample for three is lethal. Never mind. Just double checking. Five, six. Opponents at three. All right, Balrog got answered, but still got seven damage in. Okay, I've got a beautiful hand. If we can hit a land drop or two, but we've got our Swamp Cycler in hand. Turn two, Goblin. Turn three, Swarming. And one can hope a turn five, Balrog. So yeah, we're just one land away. So it's looking good. Okay, turn three swarming. Make our treasure. We can double spell next turn, although don't expect to cast this. Berserkers next. So, don't really need to attack with Fire Leaper. Could attack with a 2 2. Prefer trading Fire Leaper when there's something else in play we can trade for. Okay, so as long as we can dodge a discard spell, we've got another turn 5 Balrog lined up. Berserker is a ring bearer, but. 
Can still block it with Fire Leaper, potentially. A one ring to rule them all. Mill cards equal to the Ring Bearer's power. Destroy all non-legendary creatures. Okay, I see how it is. Mill some good ones. Okay. Well, time to play the Balrog and uh, let's see here. Could also play this and tempt someone to make it legendary, but yeah, let's not mess around. Do need to sack the treasure. Play Balrog. And then we may as well attack with everyone. And then with an Ant's Fury we can likely clear a path. Surprise it didn't at least block my uh, Pathfinder here. Five mana. A Lambos, that's fine. Does keep them alive if they gain three life. And a Pathfinder. Okay. So now Ant's Fury should be game over. Uh, unless they have the Death Touch trick, which now with uh, Fury I guess we can play around it a little bit better. Alright, no tricks in sight. So the Balrog is clear for takeoff. And there we have it. And so there's our Doors of Durin. Get our Swamp, Pathfinder for ramp. Yeah, this hand has potential. I'm okay cycling the Troll since we want to get up to 5 mana at least. And then revive the Shire and maybe get it back later, we'll see. Cast into the Fire could line up quite nicely here if they play another 1 toughness creature. Frodo, that's a 1-3. Okay. So probably better to just play a Pathfinder now, and then next turn we can double spell Pathfinder and maybe a cast into the fire, give them another chance to play a 1 toughness creature. Although, I think I just messed up. Yeah, Frodo can force us to block it. Oops. So we're just losing our Pathfinder here. Yeah, we don't have the option of blocking Spider either. Oops. Yeah, that was a mistake. Although, yeah, it's not like we can do much else here in the meantime. Just have to play land and pass. The weird ability on Frodo being relevant. Can kill the spider, probably fine to take one, see if there's another one toughness creature that shows up. And then we need to find removal for Frodo before we can play Pathfinder again. Alright, guide works. And then they can force us to trade for Frodo if they give it Death Touch. Although never mind, we can't actually block Frodo because it's a ring bear. So yeah, play guide. And then hope it survives so we can set up our doors. Generous ants. So if I keep land and then ants and we play doors, then we can put ant in play for free if we get to attack. Seems good. And if not, I'll still have land 6 to play the ants eventually. Alright. So good punished for not killing the spider earlier. But we got a removal spell out of the way. So now what? 
I guess play doors and just pass. Or we can get rid of the spider anyway. Although I'm sure opponents got a disenchanted already here. What could have been? But there's still hope. Opponents not dealing too much damage in the meantime. Mm hmm, they found their splash collar perhaps. So to play the end or not to play the end? Could kill Spider first, so we don't run into any Death Touch fight effects. Although if they do, we can just revive it back. Could also revive Play Guide this turn. But let's just keep it simple. If they can switch the Ring Bearer, then I guess Frodo with Death Touch could also trade, but then we can finally play Pathfinder again. Well, doors could have been awesome if our four drop survived, so it's just being awkward now since we're unable to play Pathfinder into Frodo. But uh, yeah, I didn't give it an incredibly high rating in the set review either, because it does require a bit of setup. But now that the setup is complete, it's time to reap the rewards. And uh, how do we want to sequence this? I could cast first to see if there's a Pump spell or protection spell, and then maybe not attack with end. Opponent is keeping up an awful lot of mana, so it's possible they're holding the sweeper too, for all we know. In which case, I still want to get rid of the spider, force them to play the sweeper first. Yeah, let's see what happens. Alright, so now we get a clean attack in with end. That seems pretty good. We got the achievement unlocked. Balrog Durin's Bane with Doors of Durin. Now I wouldn't be surprised if our opponent has the Battle of Bywater to kill both my creatures next turn. Since they've got the double white, they've been playing sort of passively. But still get to play Pathfinder, which will survive, and then Revive the Shire, can get back Balrog eventually. Can sack our food token, gain three. So after a, a bit of a misstep at the start by playing Pathfinder, we might still be okay. Hobbit Sting kills our 1-1. One -one. Also makes sense that they would have that in hand. We didn't present many great targets for it. Are we getting by watered? Nope, Aragorn the Uniter. Thanks to the fixing from the Great Hall. Not bad. So Ring all level 2 gets to loot. And Aragorn can trade for the Balrog. Okay. Forming. Let's just turn our team sideways. I don't think there's anything I need to get back first. I guess we could revive the guide to give us even more scry. That doesn't seem necessary. Bottom, bottom. Reveal. And we got a free lieutenant which your opponent can block, but then they would die, so they're forced to block something else. Alright, Doors of Durin definitely redeemed itself here. Frodo down, it's been a thorn in our side, and then can revive Balrog, because why not? Could keep this in hand in case of a different sweeper, but then we just slam down Balrog, so... I think we have most angles covered. And there we have it. Awesome. 
Well, this was a very successful limited run. And uh, yeah, this Jun deck played out very nicely. A ramp into big things, a bit of removal mixed in. And uh, yeah, got to live the dream of a turn 5 Balrog a couple times. I would crack some packs to do pack 1, pick 1, but this uh, fully unlocked account has all the rares and mythics already, so we're just getting to see gems. But uh, yeah, there will be many more drafts to come hopefully in the next couple days. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.